Hello and welcome to the online service for St Mary's Church in Ely. My name is Ruth and I'm one of the team at St Mary's and Christchurch. And whoever you are, wherever you're from, you are really welcome here as we join together to worship God. Through Lent, we are looking at the book of Acts and specifically the first five chapters of Acts. In those chapters, we read of the earliest church, which was in Jerusalem, the earliest believers responding to the life and death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. We'll be seeing what we can learn from this early church of how we can be a church that prays, a church that proclaims, a church that cares, a church that shares and a church that does not give in to violence. In a moment, we'll be opening God's word together and hearing from our speaker for this week on one of those themes. But before we do that, let's join it together as we reflect and hear and sing along with a worship song. Who you are. 
Chapter 4, beginning at verse 32. The believers share their possessions. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. There was no needy person among them, for from time to time those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Luke chapter 9, beginning at verse 10. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. Then he took them with him, and they withdrew by themselves to a town called Bethsaida. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. Late in the afternoon, the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowds away, so they can go to the surrounding villages and the countryside and find food and lodging, because we're in a remote place here. Jesus replied, You give them something to eat. They answered, We have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Unless we go and buy food for all this crowd, about five thousand men were there. He said to the disciples, have them sit down in groups of about fifty. The disciples did so and everybody sat down. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples to set before the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. A church that shares. Well, I think at that point of a wonderful snowball fight and sledging. What happened was this. In a church that we belonged to years ago, we came out of church one morning and it was snowing. And quite spontaneously, about 30 of us went home, got changed and went to a local beauty spot and had a wonderful time for a couple of hours, really, just playing having fun. You know, one characteristic of a sharing church is that they enjoy being together and sharing fun, spontaneous fun, is part of that. There is so much more. And Hilary and I over the years have had two profound experiences of churches that shared, or Christian groups that shared anyway. But let's get to the heart of things and look at Jesus. We always need to start there. And the Gospel reading is wonderful as an example of Jesus modelling sharing. The impression is from this Gospel and other Gospel accounts that there's been a hard process of ministry going on. And here was Jesus and the disciples escaping for a bit of rest and recuperation. And yet when the crowd appeared, 
Jesus welcomed them. Isn't that amazing? Because he then goes on to share himself, share his time, and of course, share good news about the kingdom of God. There's also a shared meal that's quite extraordinary. It would have blown the minds of the 5,000 plus people who were there. And it's not because of the miracle with the fish and the bread, though that's important, but rather there was no hand washing. There was nowhere to wash the hands. And part of that crowd we know were sick people therefore unclean, so a good Jew should never eat with unclean people. And then there's Bethsaida. This was in Galilee, and that was a multicultural, multi-faith community. So it's fairly sure that in amongst the 5,000 that, that we hear about, that there would have been non-Jews. Sharing a meal with non-Jews that's not kosher. You see, the sharing that Jesus does often seems to break conventions. It attacks taboos, prejudices, and is often sort of unsafe and not a risk assessment in, time, in sight. It's very exciting, isn't it? And then we move to the passage from Acts, and we see another characteristic here, a characteristic of sharing, because it springs from being of one heart and one mind. Occasionally we see this in society broadly, and so there's been very much a sense of one heart and one mind in the magnificent response of people in the UK to the problem, it's more than a problem, the tragedy of Ukraine. And also on this Mothering Sunday, a celebration within churches of families and particularly mothers and self-giving and sharing. It's all part of it, isn't it? But what we see in the early church in this passage in Acts is an intensity of unity leading to an intensity of sharing that, yeah, it unlocks possessiveness and releases possessions. Nobody saw anything as just belonging to them, but rather something to share. It's a different level of life together that we see here that is a wonderful model and gives us direction for our church life together. And of course, the shared experience that we see here is a shared experience of Jesus. Now, let's not imagine that communism has broken out in Jerusalem. No, it hasn't, as you read it more carefully. It was a very particular situation, a very particular time. But ownership in this community was seen as an opportunity, an opportunity to share what people owned. There isn't a sense of it being an obligation. It wasn't a membership requirement, it was voluntary. And we have the example of Barnabas here. And as we read carefully, we read that he sells a field. The implication is that he probably owned a whole number of fields and maybe a couple of houses. We don't know for sure. But what happened with Barnabas? is that he noticed a need. Noticing is an underrated delight for Christians. We need to learn the skill of noticing. 
He noticed a need, and he also noticed the nudge of God, and then was obedient to it. One of the experiences that Hilary and I and our family share comes from that snowball throwing church up in Derbyshire. And it was much more than that, because it was a place where skills were shared, time was shared, meals were shared. And yet Hilary and I sort of became homeless for uh, about three months, I think it was, and friends of ours gave us a room in their house for those three months. Wonderful sharing, very practical. And another aspect was a whole lot of us had open insurance policies on our cars so that people could borrow our cars. It wasn't a perfect church at all, but it was learning something about a shared lifestyle that was very exciting and it reached beyond the immediate church community to the town that we lived in. It was a sharing, as here in Acts, that seems to be within the church community, but also go beyond. And this continued for hundreds of years uh, with the early church. There's a lovely comment by the last pagan emperor of the Roman Empire. Julian in the fourth century writes as a pagan, these impious Christians not only feed their own poor, but ours also. He was incensed. We have to acknowledge that in these centuries that we look at here, the general populace were on, on the point of starvation poverty stricken, slavery was part of life. And so the sharing of this young church had enormous impact. It truly was a sign of the kingdom and it was good news. We head into times when the church can maybe take an even greater lead in sharing for St Mary's to find new creative ways to share with Ely. If we remind ourselves of what is spoken of in that amazing passage in chapter 2 of Acts, it's verse 42 to 47, if you want to look it up, we find a daily pattern of lifestyle involved shared worship, shared meals, shared possessions. We're talking here a shared lifestyle and where that happens it can be mighty attractive. In Belpa it was so attractive that health visitors would suggest that mums who were struggling after the birth of a child might join one of the church groups because they'd find friendship and support within it. It had become noticeable to the wider community and that's what we need to be. If it comes to sharing, well, an opportunity to share is coming up very shortly. I'm sure you've seen the advert now for tea and cakes for all who have a caring heart and maybe visit somebody regularly or maybe there's phone calls to support people. 29th of March, not just those involved in the pastoral team, but to come together and share a couple of hours together on the afternoon of the 29th. Really important, a sort of regrouping for ourselves after the difficulties of the last couple of years. As we look back to the very heart of Jesus expressed in John's Gospel, in I think it's the 17th chapter, isn't it? He speaks about the disciples, this is his prayer to Father, that the disciples would be brought to complete unity, 
to let the world know you sent me, he says. That's pretty significant stuff, isn't it? That level of unity is so extraordinary that it shows the world Jesus. At which point, it's not an option, is it? Love one another, says Jesus. But love is a very practical thing, not something sort of fluffy and pink. It needs to be love with skin on, where the help is practical, the care practical. It's a different lifestyle. Now, there's lots of good stuff that we've heard in these last few weeks as we reflect on the early church and try and learn lessons from it. Inspiring topics. And next week, another inspiring topic and lesson to learn. But there's the secret, isn't it? It's about lessons to learn. Somehow it doesn't seem good enough to me to hear about it and then move on to the next interesting lesson to learn. It's almost as if we need to stop dead in our tracks and spend the next year putting some of this stuff into practice, setting up things to enable them to happen. Yes, when we talk of sharing church, there must be an individual response, that's obvious. But there also needs to be a church response, that things are set up in such a way to promote sharing at so many levels, not just sharing possessions, but sharing our time, sharing meals, sharing our skills, not churchy skills, really practical stuff, like lawn mowers, for instance. There needs to be a church response where decisions are made to encourage these things, structures put in place to enable them to happen more easily and to promote. Otherwise, we're in real danger of just saying, oh, and next week we can learn something new. Amen. All the room was hushed and still And when the bowl was filled He stooped to wash their feet And when it was complete He said, this is what I'm asking you this is why I'm kneeling here beside you This is what I want my church to be This is what I want the world to see Who it is you follow Love each other One another Love each other in the way that I have loved you Walk together And whatever comes Love each other In the way that I have loved you Let the room be hushed and still Let us go to where And joy him has he serves And learn his way of love He said, this is what I'm asking you to do This is why I'm kneeling here beside you This is what I want my church to be This is what I want for the world who it is you follow Love 
love each other One another Love each other In the way that I have loved you Walk together And whatever comes Love each other In the way that I have loved you Love each other One another Love each other In the way that I have loved you Walk together And whatever comes Love each other In the way that I have loved you Well, thank you for joining us for this week's online worship. If you want to be in touch with us for any reason, uh, with comments or questions or concerns or anything else, do make use of the contact details for the ministry team, which are available on the St Mary's website. There'll also be information on the website about things going on during Holy Week and Easter, and of course, about all our regular activities too. And just a reminder that at the moment, the building itself is closed because of our building transformation project. So anything happening at the church will take place in the church rooms. To get there, you go past Oliver Cromwell's house and turn left and through the Vicarage car park. And it is signposted from there. But for now, let's end our service with some words and a prayer from Ephesians chapter three. So let's pray that out of God's glorious riches, he may strengthen us with power through his spirit in our inner beings, so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. And let's pray that being rooted and established in love, we may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that we might be filled to the measure with all the fullness of God. So to God, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power, which is at work in us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.